Hey everybody, it's time for another math lesson. This one's all about writing and solving story problems, specifically division and multiplication story problems. This one's even titled More Story Problems. To complete this one, there are three documents you're going to want to look at. One of them is page 163. More Story Problems, page 102. The PDF is titled More Story Problems 163. This is page 163, you see? 163. The other page that you're going to need is More Story Problems, page 2 of 2. More Story Problems, page 2 of 2. It's listed as More Story Problems 164. That's a PDF, because if you look at the bottom, check it out. It's page 164. And the third one you're going to want to look at is Guides for Writing Story Problems. These are some good guides when writing a story. Make it interesting. Make it more than one step, if possible. Make it more than one operation, if possible. Let's stick with division on this one. And when it says extraneous information, hey, you might want to try adding some extra information. Don't give the answer away. Let's keep our numbers low between 3 and 15. Let's give our products, our dividends, our answers, our quotients under. 125 as well. Let's make sure that we give the reader enough information. And remember that if you've written a story problem and it takes less than a minute to solve it, it's probably too easy. But if you can't solve it yourself, it's probably too hard. Moving right along, this is a two-page PDF. The second page is about answering story problems, which is what we're going to want to focus on today because that's what your entire assignment is going to be about. So we're going to make sure we show our thinking in a step-by-step -step and tell people what you did. We're going to use pictures, numbers, or words to show what we did. We're going to use equations to show how we solved this. We're going to make sure we draw pictures with labels and make sure that they're neat. We're going to use neat handwriting and don't forget your name. We're going to look at specific ways to handle all these today while answering some story problems. So let's dive right onto things. We're going to go on to page 163. The first thing that you're going to have to do is write a story problem. Or the equation 7 times 5 equals m and the equation 35 divided by 5 equals n and then you're going to need to go on to solving question number three question number four question number five question number six hey let's go to the other page question number seven eight nine and ten is a challenge you should always challenge yourself remember when you challenge yourself is the only way for your brain to grow and to get stronger when things are hard we're going to look at specifically how to solve these, and I'm going to show a program that you can use to do it. Now, you do not have to use this program. You may continue writing these out and taking a picture and sending them to me, but if you would rather complete them online without printing a page, maybe you run out of ink, maybe you can't print, maybe you don't have a printer. Here's another way you can do it. You can start a Google document. So I'm going to start a Google document for this one. I'm going to title it My Number and story problems. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that once we've got our number and story problems at the top of this document, if this is how you decide to solve these questions, we're going to go to our first question. It says write your own story problems to fit this equation. Seven times five. Wait a minute. That's not the one we want to do. We want to go to the first one. Ms. Rowan has six tables in her classroom and 24 students. If she divides the students evenly amongst the tables, how many students will she have at each table? Well, that feels an awful lot like a division equation. So she has six tables and 24 students. So what we're going to do is we're going to take those 24 students and we're going to divide them into those six tables to figure out how many are at each table. We're going to write this out as a division equation first off. Now remember, you do not have access to the division symbol on your keyboard. I've looked for it. It's not there. We can make it be there, but it's way more complicated than necessary. So we're going to use that forward slash button. 24 forward slash 6 equals is actually 24 divided by 6 equals. And then we're going to do the work. Here's how you do the work, folks. Here's the new thing. We're going to go up to insert. Insert. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to go to drawing and new. Now right on this page, I can draw some pictures. I'm going to do 24 divided by 6. For me to do 24 divided by 6, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create an array. So for this one, I'm going to create some shapes. So my shapes are going to be, I think I'm going to make a rectangle. 
My rectangle always shows up in this weird kind of blue color. I'm not a fan. I'm going to make it transparent, which means see-through. And then I'm going to go on this little border color line right here, and I'm going to make it purple. This purple's the best color. This button right over here is going to change the thickness of my border. So I'm going to change it to make it just a little bit thicker. And then you can see I have a purple box, a purple rectangle. Now my purple rectangle is going to supplement the equation 24 divided by 6. So I'm going to need to split it up into six parts. So for me to do this one, I'm going to go on this line here. I'm going to make an array. I'm going to make it into six equal parts. That's good enough. Once you're satisfied with it, we can see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six parts. Now this is like the six tables there are. We've got to split a total of 24 students, so we're going to do that using rows now. So if I split them right across here, I have now added one student to each table. One table, two table, three table, four table, five table, six table. The columns are our tables. We've added one student to each table. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's add another student to each table. Ooh, I moved the box again. I want to move just the lines. Can add another student to each table. Now I added one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I've added twelve students. I know that twelve is half of twenty-four. So if I add two more sets of six, which is two more rows, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, I've got four rows of six and six columns. That is 24 altogether. I can go through and count them. I've got 24 squares. One thing that you're going to do once you have this all written out is you're going to want to make sure that you label it. Now, we want to label parts, so I'm going to click on this little T in that box right there. It's a text box. Click on the text box. I'm going to put the text box right here at the top. I'm going to start off by labeling this portion. There's one, two, three, four, five, six right there, so I'm going to put a six text box just a little bit. I can make my text box smaller for some reason. Whenever they make the text boxes, they make them obnoxiously large. I don't know why. I'm going to add another text box over here. This one is a uh, four. I'm move my text box just a little bit because I can. Again, they make it way bigger than I need it to be. I want to make it smaller. Do I have to make it smaller? No, I don't. All right, now I've got my array, a four by six array. I'm going to save and close, and it's going to dump that right here on my document that I started. I've got my 24 divided by six equals, I know my answer now, is a four. Let's look at that actual question, what it was asking. Uh, Ms. Rowan has six tables in her classroom, 24 students. If she divides the students evenly amongst the tables, how many students will be at each table? Well, we now know that. Yes. Rowan will have four students at each table. I know this because I made him correct. And six times four equals twenty-four. I solved it with a picture. I labeled it. I wrote a complete sentence as my answer. I could move on to the next one. Teresa has 24 stickers in her sticker book. Each page holds six stickers. How many pages does her sticker book have? 24 stickers in her sticker book. Each page holds six stickers. I'm going to do 24 divided by six on this one, which is very similar to this one that I did, but because they're done the same equation, 24 divided by 6, I'm thinking this time we should draw it in a different way. But this time, let's draw it differently. Again, I'm going to go to Insert. I'm going to go to Drawing and New. This time, I think I'm going to solve this as groups. I was thinking on a number line, but I'm thinking groups might be better on this one because if we look at the problem, the problem says, Teresa has 24 stickers in her stick book. Each page holds six stickers. Well, let's make uh, let's make a page with six stickers on it. 
So to do this, I'm gonna make a page. I'm gonna go into shapes again. I'm gonna make a page. There's one page right there. Now I'm gonna put six stickers on this page. So for me to put six stickers on this page, I'm gonna take another shape. This time, I'm gonna make my shape a... Smiley face. Yeah, she's got smiley face stickers, that one. Smiley face. All right, I'm gonna change my smiley face. I'm thinking my smiley face should be yellow. Yes. All right, let's make six smiley faces. So I got one right there. It's one smiley face. One. If I've made pages with six stickers on each page. That gives me six plus six is 12, plus six more is 18, plus six more is 24. That gives me four pages. She's got six stickers on each page. How many stickers does she have? She has a total of 24 stickers. She's got four pages. If I click on save and close, that's going to take the image I just created. And it's going to dump it right on my page. That's manageable. You know what? Smaller. There we go. So I can see my 24 pay, uh, stickers. Six, 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 six. Done. Four times. Now, we need an equation that comes along with this. Now, the equation that I actually created, which is the same as six times four equals 24. We went through the process of solving this equation. We gave multiple equations for it and an illustration, but we still don't have an answer because it's a word problem, so our answers need to come in the form of complete sentences. The question was, Teresa has 24 stickers in her sticker book. Each page holds six stickers. How many pages does her sticker book have? Well, we have our answer. Teresa's sticker book has four pages. I know this because I drew four pages with six stickers on each page. That's a total of 24 stickers. I told them why I know what I did and my equation that came along with it. And it wasn't a complete sentence. I did the first one. I did the second one on a page that's got my number and then story problems. You have to complete the rest of them. Now, you may do them in a Google document like I did with the drawing program and submit them to me that way. It can be difficult to do and time consuming. You may also write them out on a piece of paper and send them to me. If you send me the pages with just the answers, that's not okay. You've got to send me the pages with the work. I'm going to give you right up until Friday for this assignment because there's a lot of questions there. I'm asking you to do a lot. I'm asking you to draw a picture, write an equation, and write in complete sentences for everything on page 163, more story problems, and 164. Because I'm giving you until Friday, I'd like you to make sure that you do address the challenge, please. I anticipate this to take you some time. So take your time, check your work, I would like you to send this to me for again on Friday. Otherwise, you guys have a great afternoon. We'll see you next time.